LaMelo Ball, MB1, the one of one. You already know what it is. He is back to participating in his regularly pregame, you know, workouts. His run through is pretty much getting back to what it is when he's completely healthy. Um, we, I believe that we could be expecting LaMelo Ball sooner than later. I'm not here to give you any dates or anything like that, but I'm here to tell you that LaMelo Ball is progressing. It's been a while since we've sat down and we've discussed LaMelo. I'm not one of these guys that's going to get you to run around. I wanted something concrete. When, when Melo went down initially, you heard the Charlotte Hornets let the world be known that, listen, it's going to be it's, it's slow down and we ain't rushing nothing. You expect him to miss some time. So when, when that came out, I, listen, I went with the reports. I'm going to give it some time. You understand now, the Charlotte Hornets are just downright horrendous. You know, just watching the Hornets is almost like I'm getting disgusted. You know, I'm, I'm almost getting downright nauseous, you know, looking at the Hornets. Right now, they're 13th in the East. They have completely plummeted the standings. If it wasn't for the horrible Washington Wizards and the Detroit Pistons, they would be in the bottom of the cellars. But they're 7-20. And, and when you're looking at um, the 10th seed, they're 13-18. and 18. If Melo was to come back, it's not out the realm of possibility that they could compete for a playing spot. Now, I'm not, now that's a long shot to say the least, but I mean, it's a possibility. Melo was on an epic tear prior to him, you know, going down. I hope that he makes the All Star game as well because he clearly was an All Star. It's not even up for discussion prior to what he was doing when he went down. Homage must be paid. Um, Melo this season alone um, is averaging 24 points per game, shooting 44% from the field, 38% from three. So I mean, I, I I'm just I love it what I'm seeing. If you're looking at it, he's up on everything from last year, just about as you can see. I just love what I'm seeing. Clearly, if he has some better pieces, his assist numbers will go sky high. Uh, he's being coached, you know. We all know by Steve Clifford. Clearly, this team is not is not up to par. Period. I don't even know if it's a if it's quality. Like seriously, you got Melo overly putting this team over. Can we really look at our, at ourselves in the mirror and say the Charlotte Hornets are a true competitive team in the NBA? They have so many deficiencies, so many problems, um, and it's like I said, Melo is receiving the grunt of it but i love that what i've seen from Melo that he is he's taking the floor he's shooting um and that's all you can ask for at the end of the day um you you see what's going on with tyrese you see what's going on with anthony edwards these are the guys that was in his draft class uh they they are experiencing some success i think that Melo. I don't know if he would be experiencing the team success because obviously you see Tyrese, he went to the playing championship. You see the Minnesota Timberwolves at the top of the food chain. So, but now that, and, and that's the way it's glaring to me because when you look at the Hornets, you understand, um, and you look at some of these other teams, you know, um, clearly Melo, his talent, ain't, he ain't devoid of no talent. I don't think nobody can look you look somebody in the eye and say Melo is don't have the talent. You understand? He don't have the team that these people got, and I and that's why I'm saying I don't know how much he can overcome individually. You know, when he's not getting a lick from none of these people, like Miles Bridges was supposed to come back and give a spark. I believe that Miles it might take him another season to get back to where he need to be. You understand? So I just want to point all that out as well. Um, LaMelo is revitalizing Charlotte, you know, um, got the city in a frenzy. But it's just, like I said, they have not been able to get back to where they needed to get back to. They was in the play-in two years ago, um, knocking at the door of a postseason berth. And now, team, I, I hate to say it, but teams have caught up. When does LaMelo axe out? When does LaVar step in? I mean, it's getting to the point where somebody going to have to say something. Somebody got to shake up this building, you understand, to get everybody a little uncomfortable. Because it seems like everything is – this they, they go into the cellars and there's nobody making an uproar. You don't hear none of the veterans going crazy. 
No, nobody throwing nothing in the locker room. It's like somebody got to come in here and say this ain't this is not acceptable. And and that's what I'm I'm waiting on for Charlotte. It seems like everybody just having a good old time. The way that these you would think that they in Los Angeles. The way that some of these players out there moving and operating. You know, they moving like they in Vida Loca land. You know, and it's time for them to step it up and get Charlotte back. I mean, look at this team. I mean, I think out of all of the teams in the league right now, I think Charlotte is having like the worst playoff um, berth. Like, like they've been, they missed the playoffs the longest. So, I mean, Charlotte is starting to establish a bad history for themselves. You know, even in the Kemba era, they, they was getting to the postseason occasionally, but they wasn't, they wasn't doing that. But they was getting to the playoffs, you know. And and like I said, I'm not going to hold too much on LaMelo because you could say, oh, Melo don't do it until he ain't been to the playoffs. And listen, does he have the team that's adequate for the postseason? You know, before we start talking about Edwards and everybody, Edwards got two all-star big men down. Could you imagine if Melo was playing with two all-star big men? I rest my case. But unfortunately, these ankles have derailed LaMelo's unfortunate. It's very reminiscent of Steph Curry. A lot of people might not want to point that out. Um, but Curry dealt with his issues. You know, I think if you're a basketball fan, you know, this, you know the history. Um, and like I said, what's going on with Melo could be seen as very reminiscent. So I do expect it, it get to a point where the trainers, him, his doctors, they, they figure this ankle situation out. You know, and like I said, this is his first injury. It sucks because it, it, it derailed him out so so much time. But remember, last year he dealt with a series of ankle injuries. This is the first one, and a twist in the ankle could happen to anybody. You know, this is this is a common basketball injury. Unfortunately, rolling the ankle, um, these things happen. So let's just hope it wasn't a fracture. You know, so we've seen that happen last year. And I just hope the best for LaMelo because he's so talented, you know, and I don't want him to get robbed by injuries, you know. You see what's going on with Lonzo Ball, zero two, 2 the Chino Hills prodigy, you know, number one seed, you know, in the East, dominant, you know, play, just elevating his game, just starting to figure it out. You heard him say it on Trey Young's podcast. It seemed like this was a team that was finally built for him and for Lonzo not to get an opportunity due to injuries. To, to really do something for himself, for the team, for the league. And it was robbed. You understand? I don't want to see that for LaMelo. I don't want to see LaMelo breaking all these records. Um, he going on record numbers, game in and game out, and it just get robbed due to an ankle. You know, I mean, that's, that's disgusting. And I'm going to leave it at that. Nonetheless, LaMelo Ball, MB1, the one of one. You already know the rare one. I believe he's on the return, you know, very soon, you know, so y'all better be on the lookout. Um, and when he get back, it's going to be a movie. Point blank period. It's Flight Sports TV. You already know what it is. Support us, man. The Flight Sports.